Yes. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right, here they put. Oh, thanks. Right. Yeah. Hey, just a minute. What? What's this? Well, you said you wanted a mop. Not a mop, a map. Oh. We're doing a programme on travel today. We're going on our holidays. On our holidays? Yeah. Great. Yeah, what I really need is my globe. It's around here somewhere. What's a globe? Well, it's a round map of the world. Oh, is it? Yeah, look, go and see if you can find it. OK. We're going on our holidays. Great. Where did I put it? <laughs> We've got a great show for you today. Yes. It's all about travel hey, and Paul, holidays. The one I've found, a beach ball for our holidays. Never mind a beach ball. I told you to find the globe. Well, I couldn't find it, sorry. Couldn't find it. To you. Come it. Hey. hey, just a minute. What? This is the globe. Is it? Yeah, it's a map of the world. Hey, it's a very nice map. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Can you read maps? Of course I can. Look. M A P map. Oh. Where are we on it? Well, we're just about there. Where? Look, I'll mark it for you. Okay. We're just there, that hat. Now. In these days of faster travel, the world is rapidly becoming a smaller place. It certainly is. It certainly is. <laughs> hey, just a minute. What? You've gone and punctured it. Am I? Yeah, look. Put your finger over the hole. Over the hole, right. That's it. Right. Now, where was I? Uh, yeah. In these days of faster travel, the world is rapidly becoming a smaller place. And now it's possible to go almost anywhere for your holidays. Hey, just a minute. Look, I'll tell you what. What? I'll put my finger over the hole. Right. You go and get a plaster. I'll go and get a plaster. Yeah, we'll have to mend okay. it somehow. Yes, a safari is just the job for getting away from it all. And now we're off in search of the big game. Right, I'm ready. What's that? I'm ready for the big game. Number five, look. Not that kind of big game. Oh, hey, why are you dressed all funny like that? Oh, I'm ready for the monsoon. Monsoon? Yeah. Come on, let's go and find the animals. Oh, is there animals as well, then? <sighs> Come on. One of the main things when you're dealing with wild animals is to show no fear. And as you can see, I'm quite fearless. This chap here is... Oh. But there's a fence between <sighs> you and them. Well, I'm not stupid, am I? He knows. Come on. Hey, they're beautiful, aren't they? Aren't they great? Have some of that. Ooh. Hey, they're a bit big, though, aren't they? They are big, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. Hey, they'll be okay for swimming, won't they? Swimming? Well, they've got the trunks for it. Oh, they have, yeah. yeah. Here, give me some more. Hey, I hope Tarzan doesn't need them for anything. Hello, girls. Oh, look now. What? This lot, they're coming for our sandwiches. Oh, dear. No, no, the real land. Cheese. 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 I like cheese sandwiches. You like cheese. Mm. It's all right, isn't it? Mm. Hey, uh, there's some rhinoceroses. Don't worry about it. No. I'm a bit chilly. I tell you what, I'm going to eat mine in the cab. You stay there. Hey! Are you? Oh! Let me in, let me in. But of course, wherever you go, you have to be sure to take the right currency. Oh, I love those in buns. What? Currencies. Currency oh, buns. They are nice, aren't they? Great, oh, aren't they? Them, Hello again. Now, if you're going on holiday, it's very important to find out exactly how much money you can get for your pound. For instance, if you're going to Germany, you take marks. And Spencer's. And Spencer's. No, not Spencer's. Look, if you're going to France, you take francs. Oh, yeah. If you're going to Dallas, you take dollars. So if you're going to Amsterdam, you take hamsters. Yes. <laughs> no, <laughs> if you're going to Amsterdam, you take gilders. Who's gilder? Frank's sister. Look, oh. go and get some pesetas. That's what we need, pesetas. I know it all sounds very difficult, but I'm sure if you have any problems, your travel agent will be only too pleased to help you out. Now, back to the studio. I could only get King Edward's. Is that all right? Oh. 
There. That should do it. Are you sure? Yes, I used to do first aid in the brownies. Did you? Yeah. He knows. Here, go and blow it up while I watch Armchair Theatre. I'll go and get the dynamite. Hey! Sammy loved fish and chips for lunch, and especially when his mum let him eat them with his fingers, as she did on rare occasions. And she used to say some of those things only mums can think of. Fingers were made before knives and forks. Today was a rare occasion, and Sammy cleared his plate in next to no time, and then wished he made them last a bit longer. He sighed, mainly from contentment, and reached out for his glass of orange, which slipped through his greasy fingers and crashed onto the floor. Ah, he's Sammy Snatchpole. This just isn't your day, is it? First of all, you tread on the cat coming down the stairs, and then you go and drop your orange juice. You better get outside where you can't do any more damage, said his man, busily mopping up orange juice and picking up broken pieces of glass. Sammy sighed again, and then slouched off dejectedly to find his cousin Joe. Joe was older than Sammy, and Sammy admired him tremendously. Joe had a Saturday job in town, and Sammy planned to take it over when he was old enough and Joey didn't need it anymore. Every Saturday, Joe sold ice cream, the creamy, softy sort that oozed out of a nozzle and twisted into pinnacles of white splendor as Joe maneuvered it into the cones. Not many people were about when Sammy arrived at Joe's ice cream van, so he was able to tell Joey exactly how fed up he was feeling. Tough, said Joe, a boy of few words. Then, look, Sammy, I just to keep an eye on things here for a minute. I just want to pop into the paper shop down the street. Then he was gone. Sammy could hardly believe his good luck, but he did feel a bit nervous. He'd watched Joe making cornets hundreds of times and knew how it was done. But what if somebody actually wanted one? Now, but there was hardly anyone about. Suddenly, a little boy appeared from around the corner, dragging his mother by the hand, and headed straight for the ice cream van. This looked like it. You did I could have it, Petrol! It's my birthday! said the boy to his mother. A special. Two dollops of ice cream on top of one another in one cone. But he was in charge. He could do it. Certainly, madam, said Sammy in his best manner, and reached for the cone. With a flourish, he flicked the switch to see the ice cream coming out. And he held his breath. His first whirl wasn't too bad. A little blunt, perhaps. He started on his second. It was perfection. A twisting, pointed pyramid. And he flicked the switch the other way to stop the flow. But nothing happened. The white snake kept coming. Flustered, Sammy handed the special to the little boy. Hurriedly, the mother paid and grabbed the little boy's hand, the one that contained the giant ice cream. It squirted all over her skirt, so she dragged the little boy away. The ice cream was piling onto the pavement, then spreading across the road. A boy out riding his bike became a twin pinwheel of white foam and nearly rode into a shop, partly out of surprise and partly because his glasses become two discs of ice cream. A baby in a pushchair outside the shop gurgled as the white tide advanced and then, deciding it was good enough to eat, dipped a podgy hand into it. We know Mrs Menzies summed up the situation immediately and ran inside to fetch a bucket to stock up a fridge. The ice cream leaped and whirled and drifted and Sammy surveyed the winter wonderland he'd created almost with a sense of power. Then, desperately, he leapt at the switch again, and still nothing happened. Cats and dogs appeared from all directions, united in a common lapping. And doors and windows were flung open, and astonished faces peeped out as the avalanche surged down the street. In the valley below, the 2.30 train puffed cosily on its single line. It was a steam train, and full of day-trippers, waving flags, and looking happy. Hey, Dennis! Don't stick it out of the window, yelled Dennis's mum in the front coach. You get something in your eye. But it was too late. A large plop of soft ice cream landed on Dennis's face, and he licked it in disbelief. Slowly the train ground to a halt, and the driver and fireman looked at the curling white drift on the line. It can't be snow, said Jim the driver. It's not forecast, said the fireman. 
It's ice cream, shouted Jim as a plop trickled down his face. Call a fire engine, said the fireman, panicking. We need a snowplow, said Jim as excited children started pouring out of the train. In the van, Sammy stood helplessly by the machine as ice cream poured out of it. People appeared with shovels to clear it and buckets to store it in. Joe arrived, ploughing through the white drift. Shut it off, he shouted. I can't. It won't stop, said Sammy. In desperation, he gave the machine a kick. That did it. With a final slur and a gulp, there was silence. With a last, almost regretful look at his white world, Sammy dipped his finger in it, licked it, and then fled back home to where the fields were green. Hey, love, you look fair done in, said Mum. Sit down and have your tea. It just wasn't your morning, was it? Has your afternoon gone better then? Look, I've got you a special treat for your tea. Ice cream. Special treat, thought Sammy. If only she knew. One, two, oh. three, four, oh. five, and the briefcase. Yeah. Hey, just a minute, what's this? It's my keys for my holidays. Oh, you can't take anything as big as that with you. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be travelling light, remember? Travelling light? Yeah. Well, what's all this here then? Well, they're mine, and they're only light. Look. Oh, I see. Anyway, I took the trouble to pack you something earlier. Oh, that's very nice yes. of you. There you are. Thanks, a bundle. Hey, we need to work out a route to Paris now. Come on, over here. Here it is. This is the map. This is the map. Now, we've got to find the most direct route across France. Oh. Because a lot of the roads out there have tolls on them. Did you know that? I never knew that at all. Oh, what? yeah. Now then, the most direct route. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look now. Uh, we are here. We are here. Yes. And Paris is here. Paris is here. So the most direct route is there, like that. That'll hey, do. that's great. That won't take us very long at all. It's only a few inches, isn't it? Correct, yes. Hey, just a minute. How are we going to get across this water here? Um, you'll think of something. I'll think of something. Uh, while he thinks of something, let's go to our resident courier, Simon Lovell. Have you thought of anything yet? We could always swim. Well, I don't know much about being a courier, but we magicians have, are, of course, famous for making things travel from place to place. Here's a little potted history of how we do it with playing cards. First of all, the early magicians used to just wiggle their fingers and make the spots of a playing card move from place to place. However, that got a little bit boring, so the later magicians tried to make whole sections of cards move about. They'd pop a card into a wee box. With a special bit of chuckle vision magic, they'd manage to move a whole section of card out of place. One, two, three. And as you can see, it really just is one ordinary card. But here today on Chuckle Vision, we're going to try a world record. We're going to try and make some cards, whole cards, move from one place to another place by magic. For this, I need my two volunteers. Would you please welcome the McChuckle Brothers? Well, this is it, guys. We're going to try a world record card trick. You both need to have ten playing cards for this to go. Would you hold out one hand? We're going to count them on. Hold the rest of the pack for me and don't touch anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards. Aye. Hold them nice and tight. Aye, aye. You didn't touch anything, did aye, you? No, Jimmy, no, That's okay, Jimmy. then. And ten for you as well. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hold them nice and tight. Thank you very much, Jimmy. No, 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 no. It's, I'm not giving them to you. It's just for the trip. Ah, see so you can. Aye, see so you can. Hey, aye. Aye. Hold them nice and tight. Aye, so you can. Now we're going to try and make three invisible cards jump across. Are you ready? Here goes the first one. And now two at once. Shuffle them. Oh, I've dropped one. Uh, put the cards together, and the two cards go into your hand. Now, hopefully, if our world record attempt has worked, you'll only have seven cards, and you'll have 13. Ten. Let's have a look. Lift up your hand. Let's count them one at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards only. Open up your hand. Let's see if it's worked. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, 
6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Three cards from McChuckle to McChuckle. Yeah, 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 yeah. And now it's back in the studio. Well, as you can see, we've now got all the right clothes on for a holiday abroad. There's only one more thing we need. What's that? Well, wheels, of course. Wheels? Yeah, something low and sporty and open-topped, so we can feel the wind through our hair as we're driving along the boulevard. Great. Yeah. Can I drive it? Yeah, if you like. Great. Shall I go and get it? Yeah, you go and get it. I'll go and get it. Well, yes, one of the great things of motoring holidays abroad is to drive along in a high-powered, sporty car and you... you... Hey, what's that? Hey, where are you... Where are you... Hey, turn it off! Hey! Hey! What are you... I can't hear you because it's too noisy. But what is it? It's something low and sporty. You asked for that. Well, I suppose it'll have to do then. Great, isn't it? All right, I tell you what, let's get the cases in because it's got lots of luggage space, hasn't it? OK, then. There you go. Put that in there. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll have a little rest while you pack the rest of the stuff. All oh. right? OK. <sighs> hey, and Barry. What? Don't forget to pack the map. The map? The map. OK. <sighs> yeah, I've got the map. I'll put oh. it somewhere nice and safe so we don't forget it. Right, are we ready? <laughs> He's ready. Here we go. <laughs> what are you? Paris! Look, it's the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> well, here we are in Paris. Now, one of the most exciting things about a foreign holiday is talking in a foreign language. And here we have Les Frasebo. I'll just go and chat to the natives. Natives? Let's have a look here, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Mon apparel. Eh, uh, mon parallel um, parlez-vous uh, anglais. Nicht sprechen Deutsch, nicht verstehen Deutsch. Uh, Deutsch? Oh, much like it's good to hack fast to get you my horn. Ha! Yeah, hey, it's good here. I like this here. Um, excuse me, excuse me. Uh, quest el le milieu milieu uh, milieu uh, le plus push. Yeah, straight down the prom. <laughs> it's amazing, Barry. This is amazing. I haven't got that prom prom. And here we are on the famous Place of Concorde to think of all the famous people that have strolled up and down these boulevards. And from here, it's just a few minutes' walk to the Riviera. Ah, yes, the Riviera, the home of the rich, the famous... And the peers. Uh, yes, and the peers, yes. Now, let's sample some of the French delicacies, les coquilles. Les coquilles? Yeah. Oh, cockles. That's it. Les coquilles, les muscles. Alive, alive, oh. Don't be stupid. Look, over here. Get the phrase book. Let's have a look now. <laughs> Les coquilles, s'il vous plaît. Uh, it's obviously foreign. Is your mate feeling all right? He's on his holidays. Ah, de petit chat. Hey, looks like the chocolate lounge to me. Hey, Barry, uh, look. I can't see anything. Exactly. We've only walked all the way to the Sahara Desert. Are you sure, eh? Yeah. Look. Sand. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right. Why? The vultures are gathering. Oh, keep walking. OK. Oh. 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 It's no good. We're miles from anywhere. I can't go any further. Oh. Hey, we can go back on the bus. No, that's not a bus. That's a mirage. You always get mirages in the desert. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Look, well, that's all we've got time for. See you next week. We'll have to go back the way we came. Come on. Bye. Bye.